from Tobacco Republic in Loomis, California, the Loomis Cigar Cartel presents Beyond the Humidor, a cigar podcast for the rest of us. Hey, welcome once again, a less caffeinated Scott Robinson with you here. Thank you, God. <laughs> episode 35 of Beyond the Humidor. Um, I did a quad vente latte today, not the seven shots of freaking espresso that had me riding high on previous episode. Wait, 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 wait. You left out part of your drink. What part did I leave out? It's a quad vente vanilla latte. Yeah, why not? I like flavor. Don't you like flavor? I have nothing to say to that that would be appropriate. Yeah, coming from the guy who goes over to the human being and gets this monstrosity with whipped cream and a coffee bean on top trying to talk like a tough guy. I don't get whipped cream on mine. I don't like that. I've seen you. It looks like I don't a- like whipped cream floating on the top of my coffee drinks. <laughs> I, I just, uh, hey, yeah, I know. You got hey, nothing? Uh, it, no. It's, you know what I got? I got fucking coffee. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> Say it with me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, uh, uh, extra foam, uh, mild whip, soy. Uh, uh, no. What would you like in that? I would like I would like you to filter the water through the fucking ground up beans. <laughs> That's what I would like. Holy crap, we've gotten started early. <laughs> hey, <laughs> guess what? Gibbs is on the program today. <laughs> yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> These guys, not you guys. <laughs> wow. Hi out there. I think we did about, let's see, what was that? About five expletives in about one minute? That's kind of a record for us, or is it? Yeah, it so, is. Yeah, slap an E on this one. <laughs> Don't let your eight-year-olds listen. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> You're letting them play, uh, they're letting them play... Uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty. And whatever else, but they're worried about three guys talking shit on a podcast. Okay. Hey, just say it. It's at your leisure. (laughs) (laughs) That's a fire. Trying to light yourself on fire, Robinson? Yeah, pretty much. I've had this freaking recurring nightmare for the past week. (laughs) <laughs> we know what this nightmare is yes we do <laughs> okay you want, Mr. Robinson. so if you listen to the last show tiny wife and i purchased an rv now part of having an rv for any or a, tra- a travel trailer or a class one whatever you may have and it has a bathroom it's got a black water tank <sighs> I've had this recurring nightmare somehow me screwing it up and either I got all, you know, open up the valve with the gate open, open up the freaking outflow pipe and it splashes all over me or I do it wrong and somehow it backflows into the RV. That's what I get for watching how to empty a black water tank videos before I go to sleep. Yeah. How, how much, how much um, um, inappropriate stuff do you have to go through before you found the video you wanted? <laughs> It's YouTube, not Pornhub. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just saying, you got to be careful on the Google search, brother. <laughs> well, here's the thing that's funny. So I tell my wife this, and she says, it's, you know, reassuringly, in her kindest little voice, this tiny wife does, it'll be okay, honey. It'll be fine. And I'm looking at her, you're going to be in the fucking trailer while I'm doing this shit. It's like, oh, I'm with you in spirit as I'm sitting here shoving a pipe through the shit pipe. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta deal with it. And she's in the trailer just like, oh, just watching us here. Hey, I can have you do it. Oh, this is where women's lib falls on its head. I say, oh, well, you can do it. And she says, no, no, you're the man. You get to do it. Yeah, it's funny how that line gets good. There you go. <laughs> Let's see, Battle of Grizzly Bear, Dump the Shit Tank. All right, I got, I got two on my checklist. Right. I understand. Oh. So today we are what we're smoking the proprietor of the shop has come across some grand habano um grand reserva number five from 2010 larry and i are smoking them and oh man i'm just going to start this off on a scale of one to take your ass to flavor country greg not flavor town flavor country this is a definitive dare i say it yes Take your motherfucking ass to Flavor Country. This is good. Yeah. 
This could be your first 10, I'm thinking. Oh, yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> it's a 2010, and we give it to the 10. <laughs> uh, no, no. This, this is an amazing stick. <laughs> yes. I'm uh, probably a little over a third of the way through it, and uh, get just a tiny little bit of spice on the, uh, on the back, on the draw, and just, man, it is, it is great. And you know what I don't notice? Because uh, I've got the 2011. Um, what I'm not noticing is normally when you smoke the, the Gran Habano number no. five off the shelf, you get a very upfront cedar note and it's not present with the extra aging. No, it really isn't. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the, it's aged out, you know, and the combination of the 2003 Esteli Habano Lajero and the 2004 Nicaragua um, Malapa Habano. It's just a wonderful combination. Yeah, I think so too. Gives a great taste. And um, today we are drinking some Macallan 12 year sherry oak cask single malt scotch. Funny story. The I drunk go... ran out of liquor. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> wow. Pump the, the brakes, man. <laughs> whoa, we, you think we, you're better than me? <laughs> we prefer. Beverage enthusiast. <laughs> My man. So I go under the register to find my bottle and came to the realization that I drank all of it the last time, I think. Greg's the one who pointed it out. He's like, didn't you drink it all last time? I'm like, crap. I was like, how much time do I have? So I went to the local supermarket at... 7.20 in the morning. And I have to give it up, and I'm going to name them by name, Rayleigh's. I like you, Rayleigh's, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> they must give all their cashiers and employees, they show them like a three-minute video of, you didn't see nothing, mind your own damn business. So when I show up at 7.20 in the morning with a bottle of McAllen, I got no jokes, just a, hi, how's it going? Ran it through the register, told me how much it was, and I went on my way. I think that's some specialized training they give them because I've come across a few cashiers who want to make commentary on what you buy. For instance, back in the day when I played Vatican roulette, as my um, Catholic priest used to say, and for all you non-Catholics out there, Vatican roulette is basically taking your chances without using birth control. So he affectionately called it Vatican Roulette. So on one of these happenstances, I had to go to the store and buy a pregnancy test. So I go buy the pregnancy test, take it to the register, and some judgmental fourth grader looks at me and says, ooh, in some trouble there. <laughs> I wanted to punch him in the fucking face. They don't do that much anymore. Yeah, I think probably because the McCallum's not working yet. <laughs> <laughs> dial it back, buddy. Dial it back. I'm good. I'm good. Now, see, you missed an opportunity this morning at the at the Rayleigh supermarket. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. What I do? Because all you bought was a McCallum. You wanted a little bit of response. You should have got a box of powdered donuts and a turkey leg. <laughs> like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> Because that would, you missed an opportunity for that clerk to have a story for the rest of his life. Now, nah, this one time, man, in 2021, dude came through at 7 in the morning, bought a, bought a bottle of scotch, a box of powdered donuts, and a turkey leg. Come man, on, brother. Uh, <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's been to rescue Robinson from his... his there's been a lot of, of, of legislation lately, and we don't typically get political on this show, and we're not. But there's been a lot of legislation in various states, a few come to mind, um, getting rid of the ability for you to smoke indoors, smoke in cigar lounges, smoke in parks, smoke outside, even so much as being able to smoke in your own home. So I, you know, I think we should take a few minutes here um, and tell the listeners and talk to our, our listeners and our watchers about the importance of the lounges and why cigar lounges such as Tobacco Republic are, are so important for us because, you know, they're going to take away our, our ability to smoke everywhere. we got to have somewhere to go. 
I think, unless it's inside your own home. For me, I think that for all this talk about what they're trying to legislate, if it came down to it and they said you just couldn't do it anymore, I think that it would revert to base to private clubs. You pay a membership fee and you do whatever you want. There's a local um, cigar shop out here. That's exactly what they did to create a cigar and I would call it a tap, almost like a tap house because it's not a full bar. But when you go to the bar section, you pay a buck and that's your membership fee for life. And then you go onto a mailing list and then they turn around and say your first purchase is a dollar off. So basically you have $2 crossing in the night and but you're still a member and that's what it'll revert to it's a shame that you've got to do little technical tricks like that where it's going to come in is where you are leasing space to do a cigar lounge if it gets legislated out where they you know tell you okay you can't have a smoking establishment with attached locations because this is a non-smoking strip mall building whatever well, they County, actually, they whatever. actually, they did that. Um, the the one up there across the street from Fumari, where you can sit down and have your meal and have a cigar. Yeah, that's what the building owner did. Right. So it'll be, in, and it's with as much as I hate it, it's that building's owner owner's right. Mm-hmm. I think it's silly, but I get it. Yeah. Because if you have neighboring renters who have no interest in cigars or don't want it leaching over to them. I, again, I get it. I do, but at a certain point too, you know, we should have a place to go. I mean, if you look at, if you look at, that's twice today, man. I know. That's why I'm doing it away from me. Do it over the tablet. It'll survive. Um, I think a lot of things, you know, when you look at it, you look at like the city of Santa Barbara, for example. They, the way their law is written, it can technically be construed as you can't even smoke in your backyard. Because they've banned smoking in all outdoor areas. Yeah, good luck stopping me. Yeah. I, that's more symbolic. I mean, that's for parks, but do you really think that the cops are going to show up to your house and say, hey, have you been smoking? No, Dad, I haven't. Uh, apparently, you haven't had a shitty neighbor experience. Oh yeah, they You don't have any Karens where you live, huh? I do not. So my yeah, neighbors I mean, keep any, themselves, but they're cool. Anything's possible, you know. I mean it's it's less legislation on any of these type of issues I think is better. Um, but I mean what's what's a cigar lounge harming? I mean, I get the whole, you know, if you're in a a, a series of buildings, a strip mall where there's yeah. other you know, okay, so maybe you go to a standalone building. Maybe you do that. Yeah. Um, the whether you can smoke somewhere or not smoke somewhere aside, uh, you know, why set that? Let's let's just set that over to the side for a minute. Why do you want to support a local brick and mortar establishment as opposed to doing you know all your purchases online? Um, there's a lot to be said for both of those uh, scenarios, buying your cigars online or, you know, coming in and actually going through a humidor with a proprietor, you know. Uh, the thing I like about this lounge and some of the other places that we go semi-regularly is you get to build up a rapport with the proprietor, with the people of that establishment. I've gotten opportunities to smoke some different cigars that I never would have known anything about, had never heard of, wouldn't have had a chance to get if I knew about them because of the relationship here at this lounge. You know, prime example, Scott and I are smoking, uh, both smoking a cigar that, this morning that there's no possibility of finding this online it's or, not it's such a limited production or, or right. even what to look for you know would you have even known this was had come out hell no so um yeah you just 
and it's you know you get the camaraderie of a, of a lounge that will let you come in you know sit down and smoke there's just there's just some really really good experiences good positive stuff that comes out of you know and shop local you know it's just, yeah yeah i'm a believer in small business but aside from that it's the community mm -hmm. you know this podcast would not be possible if there wasn't a lounge where I met people and talked to people and we get together and do cigar associated things. You know, um, cigars are my thing. So what's not better than coming into a lounge where someone has the same interest that I do and we sit back, have a smoke, talk about everything from women to physics to guns to politics to whatever and enjoy my time, a nice quiet space in a weather controlled environment because I don't smoke in my house. It's outside and depending on the weather conditions that can be very comfortable to, you know, real sucky. Yeah, it does. And, and you know, fortunately too, you know, we support this lounge quite a bit and the lounge supports us too. We can film here. We can, you know, we can do our, our podcast in the morning. We can do meetings in the evening if we need to. It, 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 it's a win-win. And the, you know, I can't speak for the two of you, but the proprietor and his family have become family for me. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, you know, that I think is one of the biggest things is how many friends and extended non-related family that you get out of being able to come in here and sit and, and joke around and, and all that jazz that we do. It just makes it for a better environment. It really does. And it's also helpful to um, the cigar community, um, cigar manufacturers, reps and all, because this is a place where we exchange ideas. It's one thing to go onto the internet and read about a cigar. It's an entirely different story to go to a lounge, get together with your fellow cigar smokers and talk about different cigars, things you've never thought of, things you've never looked at, and getting their experiences, and they're getting your experiences, and you start trying different things. I've tried different cigars just by talking to people in the lounge who say, hey, you know what, this is your palate. And to the point where you're given cigars to try. Yeah. And, and experience and play, you know, they, it's a play on your palate. It's like, hey, I know you're, you know, you like Connecticut's, but Check out this Maduro. It's not what you think it is. Yep. And you get that experience not only from the other patrons, but you have the opportunity to, to meet, you know, people from the cigar industry, especially yeah. in this lounge. Um, the proprietor has been in the cigar industry a long time. Yep. He has a lot of connections. And we see a lot of people come through this lounge, through the cigar industry, that you wouldn't get a chance to... Uh, you know to associate with you know interact with and it's yeah it makes for a great experience so yeah. if, if you're if you're smoking you know at the house or you're smoking you know on your drive back and forth to work or whatever it is and you don't typically you know visit a lounge to uh to sit down and smoke take an hour out of your day it may be worth a try look around you know do a little research see what there is in your area yeah and one of the best things of all about being in the lounge, I gotta tell you, are the stories and the people you meet. I have met people from all walks of life who I wouldn't have met otherwise in a social situation just because I'm here. We have, I mean, one of our friends is a freaking nuclear physicist and does finance now. Um, yesterday, had the pleasure and honor of speaking with a guy who was from across the pond, worked in Scotland Yard, um, did celebrity protection out here, had some amazing stories. Mm -hmm. We have former police officers, former military, and we have business owners, furriers, or what is it, farrier? A farrier. Farrier, not furrier. <laughs> a furrier is a completely different Do subject. Not. Look up furrier. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> There's somebody somewhere going, what is, what's a furrier? No, 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 no. no, no. Well, and you know. Backspace, backspace, backspace. <laughs> you know, one of the things that sticks out in my mind furrier. for here 
is, you know, I, in about six months into starting to come into the lounge and hang out, you know, I was sitting in one of the chairs one day and this pretty good sized dude walks in, starts talking to the proprietor and the proprietor says, Hey, Greg, come over here. I'm like, okay. So I get up. It's Jesus Fuego from Fuego Cigars. You know, the proprietor introduces me. I sit and talk to him. Might help if you can see my face. Um, sorry, but... Didn't help. No, it didn't, did it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we talked for about a half an hour about all kinds of different things, cigars, things like that. About a year and a half or so later, again, I'm sitting in here, hanging out, and Jesus walks in. I haven't seen this dude in 18 months. He remembered my name, remembered the discussion we had last time, was asking me about various things that we had talked about from a year and a half ago, and also, you know, had discontinued a particular line that I really liked. And when he found out that it was one really liked, he walked out to his trunk, grabbed a handful of them that he had just bought from another shop, and shared them with me. I mean, how cool is that? You don't get those experiences sitting on your patio at home. You absolutely don't. You know, so I think it's one of those where you really do need to um, spend some time, as Larry said, do your research and go check out these local lounges. Yeah, without a doubt. And I understand, you know, it's, um, understand as far as price point, you know, people will tell you, hey, you know, on, online is cheaper. If I go to a brick and mortar, I'm paying more money, but I'm getting more value doing it off of the internet. And I would tell you the value, quote unquote, that you're getting online, you're missing out on a huge social aspect of this. Yeah, the monetary value doesn't always factor. It doesn't. To the personal experience. So, that's, yeah, that's very true. And as we talk about, you know, this, how are your smokes coming along? I this this is excellent. Um, yeah, just a really rich. Uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of the cedar now. I'm a little farther into the stick than you are, I think, Scott. I'm still getting cedar. Well, if you do a somewhat of a retrohale, you'll get the cedar. Mm. The last time we shot it on the balcony, I tried to retrohale. It was a bad experience. I think I'll pass. But you no, know, it's true. I mean. George Rico with Gran Habano is known, I mean, his everyday cigars that are on the shelf are fantastic. They're ones that I particularly yeah. go to frequently. These extras, you know, this isn't the first special edition that he's made. Um, it certainly is way up there. As Scott gave it a 10, it, it's, it's way up there within the annals of, of some of my favorites. Um, you know, the Mi Liga comes to mind when we, was the 100 boxes and that was it. Greg, can I ask a question? Fire away. What is your hatred for fla Flavor Country? He called it a tin. What was the rating again, Greg? Listen here, Marlboro man. <laughs> Get your Black Stetson, your freaking flannel uh, and boot cut cowboy jeans and boots and shut the fuck up. Then we'll talk about Flavor Country. He has a hatred for Flavor Thank Country. Thank you, Philip Morris. There's your plug. Why does he hate Flavor Country so much? I don't know, man. He get a little frisky, though, isn't he? Yeah, just a little bit. He was frisky this morning, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah. So how's your cigar, Robinson? Oh, my cigar is lovely. Give, give him a rope, thinks he's a cowboy. <laughs> yeah. I know better. I'm too fat. There's fat cowboys. Yeah, Google that. See what you get. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe, Robinson. I can't. I got a lot of liquor in my mouth. How'd you, how'd you like the retro hail of the Macallan there? That was good, huh? Yeah, I'll be honest, though, man. The, uh, the uh, cigar is going better with the coffee than the scotch this morning. And yeah. Uh, I was, I was kind of stuck on selection. I saw Macallan and said, Macallan, it was either no, no, this I'm or... I'm not saying that the, the no, no, I know. rough. I'm just saying that the, the cigar, I think, this cigar in particular, pairs a little better with the coffee than it does with the scotch. I'm yeah, you just, probably would be right. But I was kind of stuck on selection. It was between this or Tiller Mordu, and it wasn't it, it? I didn't feel like it was a Tiller Mordu kind of morning. And you know, I like McAllen, so. Yeah. But this one, okay. 
I don't know how it would pair with the or pair with the birthday cake uh, drink you got there from uh, Starbucks, but you know, with, <laughs> with a coffee, it does all right. Well, let me tell you, um, this has burned out all the coffee taste there we go. <laughs> after the first taste. I mean, it washes. I I can't taste coffee. All I taste is uh, McAllen and the cigar, which is you know not a bad thing, but. If you want something to put hair on your chest, literally, McAllen 12 Sherry Oak Cask, 12 year, whoa. This yeah, will I give think you... I'm out a little bit. It's like, whoo. Yeah. This this will make a man out of you. I'm thinking a mid-morning nap is what's going to make out of you. <laughs> so, I think our natural uh, natural progression here now would uh, would be, you know, talking about it, if you're getting out and experiencing a little bit uh, of the lounge experience and you find you're enjoying that, you know, you're, you're getting to, to meet some people you wouldn't necessarily meet, uh, smoke some cigars you may not have heard about or, you know, have the opportunity to purchase online. Now, you're, you know, depending on the, on the lounge or shop that you're in, maybe you've uh, had an experience with a, uh, a cigar rep or two or a manufacturer the the next step in that uh in that uh, uh adventure is going to one of the cigar events right yeah i think so and our first one of the first cigar events i have ever been to and i have been planning to do this for years because i am a longtime subscriber to cigar aficionado and they're big thing is the big smokes which they have all over miami las vegas chicago new york. Well, new york and a few years ago a group of us got together and went to the big smoke in las vegas which was a you know it was a really fun time one of our buddies had a timeshare and he was gracious enough to you know let us use the timeshare and we went over to the hotel where it was we went to different lounges in vegas and then the big event, which was the big smoke, we went to that, and that was that was a very good experience. Now the question is, would I do it again? I I, I think I would, but it wouldn't be like a yearly thing, unlike something else, which we'll get to later. It's something I would do every couple of years, I think, because the way it works is when you pay for your ticket at the big smoke, you stand in line, of course, to get in, and they give you like a ticket book. For, it was like 30 tickets, and they have all the cigar reps, all numbered correspondingly, and you give them a ticket, and they give you a free cigar. Now, during all of this, they have food, they have um, beverage samples, and the refs are, reps are talking to folks. But the problem, I thought, and I think, Greg, you'll agree with me, is with them busy doling out cigars... It makes it difficult to really talk to them until later in the evening. Well, that was that was actually going to be my comment, Scott. Is that you know, the event is a great deal of fun. It's a lot of fun to go do, and if you do like we did, where we made a weekend of it and we visited the different lounges in the in the area, it really makes it a good trip. But having been there for the first time with you, there's a few things that I would do differently now. First of all, you don't need VIP. Yeah. Because everybody bought VIP, unlike another event we're going to talk about where they limit how many VIP tickets you get, the Big Smoke, however many VIP tickets they sell is however many VIP entries there are. And it really didn't get to me any added benefit because we didn't get any extra cigars. We did, all we did was get in earlier and have a huge crowd to deal with. So if I was going to do Big Smoke again, which I really, you know, I think that's where the three of us should do... Um, the Cigar and Whiskey Fest, which is Big Smoke in Florida. Uh, I think that would be a fun one, but I'm not buying VIP. I don't need the extra hour, number one. And number two, I'll show up an hour late from that because the first two hours of the evening was total chaos. As you said, you can't talk to anybody because everybody's in line for the adult trick-or-treat of I need my free cigar. Yeah. So I think it would be more of... of you know, go have a nice dinner and then swing into the event, you know, an hour after it begins. And then there's going to be some times you're going to wait in line. I mean, God, you and I waited in Rocky Patel's line for an hour. Wait, you think it was an hour? It was an hour. Here's the thing, though. If you choose to do that, 
Just embrace the suck and enjoy it. We did. Don't, we were having fun. People freak out. You know, there, there's a line and you're waiting and it's like, oh, I got to wait for this. It's like, hey, talk to the people in line. That's what we were doing. Just talking to folks next to us and just enjoying the time and being social. And the line's going to move how it's going to move. You're going to get there eventually. And you have the whole evening. So just embrace the suck and enjoy it enjoy the experience so i'm not discouraging anyone from doing a big smoke the only reason i'm not doing it every year is because we it, found something better yeah we did find something better absolutely but the whole trick-or-treating thing i don't want to do that every year but i would be game to do that like perhaps this year or maybe just wait till 22 when all the COVID restrictions are completely off the table i agree let's wait yeah and just hope 22 they just take all those off the table and then do something in either new york or miami and have a good time with it well you know and and one of the new york really why not uh, you know one of the funniest things um we had at that particular event is you know we're standing in the rocky line and as he said we're talking to all these people behind us and around us and uh i don't recommend doing this the difference is Scott and I and Larry have a personal relationship with Rocky because he comes here every year. So we know him pretty well, but we're sitting in his line, we get our cigars, and then we go around, drop our bags, and we walk right into his booth to talk to, to Rocky. And the, the funniest thing was, you had a whole bunch of people in line going, who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job, Greg. Just make us sound like a bunch of douches. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Harump, harump. We're important peoples. <laughs> Not really, but it was, just, it was just funny because the thing I notice through this whole cigar journey that I've been on is none of the manufacturers think they're above anybody else. They are regular people who like to hang out with regular people and smoke cigars with regular people. That's what makes them all approachable. Well, remember Oscar Valadares? Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Oscar saw us in our shirts. We're all in matching shirts, and he loved the shirts and brought us together to his booth. He actually sought us out to go to his booth and take a picture with him. Yeah, which was awesome. Yeah. And then, you, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. And it did show up on his Facebook page. Here's the thing. This industry creates like-minded individuals. Yes. And the the manufacturers that are readily recognizable that are successful part of the reason that that is the case is because they understand the people that are buying their product and i'd agree with they, that they market advertise to those people sorry you go sir <laughs> and it's it's an experience you know, we, we've we talked to Oscar personally. We've talked to Rocky Patel, to Nish, to all these Island guys. Jim. Island Jim. Oh, dude, Island Jim's the funniest cat in the world. Oh, yes, yeah. he is. You know, Island Jim, we want you on the program. Yes. Um, but it's just, these are down-to-earth people. They are participating in something that they enjoy. And it shows. Yes. They enjoy cigars. They enjoy the fact that there are other people out there in the world that like their product. And it's, it's yeah. just a hell of an experience. Yeah. Remember when we were in the Fuente line, Greg? And who we ran, it just happened to run into? Ah, uh, yes. That was incredible because I was just like, are you serious? Enlighten us. The yeah. vice president of Fuente Cigars, granddaughter of Arturo Fuente himself, we met Cynthia Fuente. Oh, nice. Yeah. And in fact, it was hysterical because she's, you know, she's autographing all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, Scott and I both got the little totes that they, they give us autographed. And then, you know, we go through and, and we decided, you know what? Larry made these amazing shirts for us to wear to go out there. So Scott and I are like, we need signature in a different place. So we go back through the line and we had her sign the, the armband, uh, the, the sleeve on our shirt instead of the bags. And then, of course, everybody jumps on the bandwagon and wants the same thing. But, oh, yeah. but uh, I mean, it was just cool. Yeah. You know, we got to meet the cigar vixen. Um, 
I, there were manufacturers there, honestly, that I didn't even know who they were. But, but even so, they were open to talk and discuss their product with such... Tobacco manufacturers have such a passion for this product. Mm -hmm. And that's the incredible part. Most of them are very personable and want to tell you the story of doing, you know, growing and creating cigar, growing their tobacco and creating the cigar. You sit down with a um, person from a cigar house. They want to talk to you about this. They, they don't get tired of talking about it. This yeah. is their life. Yeah. And it's, it makes for a great experience, man. It, it definitely it does. does. Now, the other cigar festival we've been to, which we have determined that we're going to make a regular thing. A yearly event. Yes. The Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival in Broomfield, Colorado. We were going to go last year, but yeah, we had this thing called COVID. But the previous year, we went to it. Now, this is different from the Big Smoke because what happens is you pay, they have like four or five levels of ticket. And we get the VIP. Basically, what happens is when you are in the can line... I, can I interrupt for just a second? Please. There, there are a bunch of different levels. So just so you guys know, after listening to this episode, if you want to attend the event, it happens this year. Tickets go on sale um, in May. The VIP, if you or if you see any of the levels that say social on them, that means you're going to the event, but you're not getting all the free cigars and the free, free swag. So you want to avoid those. So anyway, so what happens is when you're in line, you give them your ticket, they give you a backpack with all the cigars they're gonna give you for the festival. So you don't have to go searching for them. The advantage to that is, is that you can go over to the booths and actually talk to the representatives, the creators, and have a conversation with them. And then some of them are selling um, parts of their line that you can get at yeah, a discounted every, price. Everybody that, that had a booth up there when we were up there in 18, mm -hmm. uh, 19? 19. 19. 19. Oops. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, everybody that had a booth up there had packaged sample packs, had stuff specifically for that event. Yes. And with extremely good pricing. And it was it was amazing. I mean, I came home with, I had to go get another bag to to get all the stuff oh, in, yeah. in, in, on the plane and it was it was ridiculous. I don't know about the two of you. I think I came home with 500 cigars. Yeah, I got yeah. four something, 480. Yeah, my freaking humidor. I mean, I had to basically take stuff out of the humidor and I'm sitting here staring at all these cigars on the floor going, how the hell am I going to get all these in here? It's like Tetris. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then keep the flow of the humidor. It's like, yeah, I can shove them all in here, but then I'm not going to get any humidification up in the top. So I'm sitting here like, okay, this will work. This will work. I'm 12 cigars today just to make room. But <laughs> aside from, from the, just the cigars and the experience, the... The thing, and I didn't go to Big Smoke, so I didn't get the you know the trick or treating. Uh, oh, oh, you will line. on the next one. Oh yeah. But the the entire event at Rocky Mountain, because of the venue, because of how it's set up, yes. because of how they do the tickets, how they give you the VIP stuff in advance, so that you're basically free to do what you want. Yes. If you don't want to see a particular line or a particular type of thing, then you don't have to to get your event cigar from that manufacturer. You're ultimately free to visit, you know, which booze you want to visit. And it's right at the Omni Hotel in Broomfield, which was an amazing establishment. They took incredible care of us. Although we didn't stay there, we stayed at another hotel, but we were on the patio. We uh, the cocktail server spent a lot of time with us, just saying. <laughs> um, and that wasn't all my doing, just to no, establish no, that. That, that, that was, we, we had a pretty pretty large group of individuals that hang out in this lounge that went, and from from what it's sounding like, we're doubling that number. Oh, big pretty, time! Pretty mm -hmm. much uh, this year. Um, sounds like we're looking at, you know, possibly 40 people 
um, that that hang out, you know, in some form or fashion here at Tobacco Republic, going to uh, uh, going to Colorado this year, and and I'm sure part of that is because you haven't been able to do nothing for a damn year. So yeah, that'll do it. The the chances of getting out and getting a, but. Uh, um, having come from, from the food and beverage industry as a younger man, I've been to a lot of events and I am comfortable saying that this is the best event I have ever been to. It is, the, the venue is amazing. The production of the event was amazing. Yeah. Um, they do local, uh, Breweries and distilleries. Prost, you Prost know. Prost beer. We yes. love you guys. We will be seeing you. I'm thinking we We're do lunch at Prost. We're going to the brewery. I think we should go to the brewery and do dinner Friday night before we come back to the Herf. That's not a bad yeah. idea. No, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Um, but it's it's one of those things, man, where if if you're into cigars, take a trip. It And... If you're only you're only going to do one trip, you know you're not sure. Should I do this or should I go here? Should I go there? I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed by the Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival. Not yeah. at all. It was a terrific weekend, I gotta say. And I'm hoping that our friends from How About That Cigar, Matt and Garrett, will be there this year. They should be. Yeah. So it'll be a it'll be great to see them um, live. I was a guest on their show last year and, you know, real good people. If you get an opportunity and I would say definitely check out their podcast and they do a live show on Mondays, I believe now. Mondays at 6.30 our time if you're in Pacific. Yes, definitely. Good guys, lots of great, great guests and some good information. So by all means, check them out as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, you can, if you want to know more about our experience on on the Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival and the several mishaps that we had. Um, <laughs> check out episode two of this podcast. It's called Two Queens and a Pullout because they tried to put the three of us in a room with one king bed. They tried anyway. And none of us are cuddling. <laughs> ruh -roh. Silence your phones, please. My phone is silenced. That was my watch. Oh, well, silence your damn watch. What is this, a movie theater? Technically. <sighs> Dumbass. <laughs> yeah. The difference between Flavor Town and Flavor, Flavor Country. Country. Screw both of you. <laughs> yeah. Independently I or one at a time? <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing this? I'll pass on both. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe, Robinson. I really Once again, should. we cross a line to uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I really should have sent you that fucking fruit basket yesterday. <laughs> yeah, Greg got a little upset because uh, I was picking on him that... Uh, that uh, well, Prince Philip died. Yeah, uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah, Please. understand. We're not laughing at the fact that the Duke of Edinburgh passed away. No, they're That's laughing the at point. me being an Anglophile. Yeah, we're laughing at him. We're not laughing about the Duke Greg, of Edinburgh. Greg loves everything uh, British and, you know, so... And I know he goes to work super early, even earlier than I do. So I saw his little green light on that he was uh, he was on Facebook. So I sent him a quick Facebook message, you know, sorry for your loss. And, uh, you know, apparently that wasn't as funny to him as it was to me. But, you know. Uh, and, and it kind of continued on from there. It yeah, was only the fourth the time I'd heard that by the time yeah, you well, texted yeah, me. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, and then I got in on it. <laughs> So, yeah, I found a uh, I found a real cool meme that somebody put together with the uh, oh my with, god with the Tinder uh, <laughs> uh, screen and a picture of the queen that uh, that said uh, you know recently widowed uh, lots of cash so uh, you know, I, yeah I share that because I'm an asshole um, I had to. Uh, I had to forward that to Greg and, you know, Scott in our group message and, you know, get a kick out of it. Oh, that. I doubled over when I got that. That was hysterical. <laughs> um, yeah. And this is uh, it's part of the problem with having ADD, you know, uh, bad enough <laughs> that you make Scooby-Doo look like a genius. You know, I see shit like this and I stop everything I'm doing. Like, ooh, I got to send that to a friend. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. So 
we've talked about, you know, being a part of the cigar community within the lounge. Tell me about your best, and it's hard to do because I had to give this some serious thought and I couldn't even pin it down. But from the start of your cigar journey to now, what is the best cigar experience you've had smoking cigars? Hmm. Yeah, it's just like one of those times where, you know, you're smoke, you know, smoking a cigar and you're just kind of like, this is pretty badass. I like this. I think my favorite, one of the first, first big events I attended here at TR was um, one of Rocky's visits. And it wound up that, you know, after everybody left, the last ash, last ash fell for the patrons. And, you know, um, which, which, you know, clerk was here anyway, it didn't matter. The, the, the minion and I, uh, I was staying to help clean up because this place is a disaster on an event, especially when you got that many people here. But, you know, we're cleaning up and it's just me, the clerk, the proprietor, and Rocky. And Ron, Rocky's rep. No, Rob, Rob, Rocky's rep. Mm -hmm. And we're all sitting in here after everything's done, everything's all cleaned up and Rocky hands out cigars and the five of us just sat here talking. And it was one of the best experiences because, you know, in the beginning, I'll be honest, a little starstruck. Oh my God, here's the owner of Rocky Patel cigars. And it, it was just a unique, oh, we're going live again. It was just a unique experience to be able to sit here and, like I said earlier, realize that this is just a regular human being yeah. and he's cool. And, you know, we talked about everything from his, what he does, hobbies, fishing, you know, horses, everything like that. It was just an amazing experience. Yeah, I would have to kind of go along with that with uh, um, years ago, there, uh, there was an event here specifically for this lounge from Gurkha. And Gurkha gave away a motorcycle, custom built. Oh, I remember that. And I just, I didn't even realize that it was happening on that particular day. I showed up here and the bike is out front and they're gonna draw the ticket. You got a ticket one raffle ticket for every box of Gurkha cigars that you bought during a particular time period. And a friend of ours won that motorcycle. And the, and I can't pronounce his first name, um, the, the head of Gurkha cigars was here. Kaizad. Kaizad, yes. I'm sorry. And it was, yeah, it was just one of those things. It was just an awesome experience. You know, he's just, he's a regular dude. And hanging out, talking to people, same kind of thing happened. You know, the end of the night, there's only six or seven people here. And we're just sitting around talking about why we like cigars. Same thing happened with um, Christoph. Mm -hmm. uh, they came in, Christoph has quite a bit of shelf space in this uh in this uh, establishment because they have some great cigars and they have a really, uh, really good rep for this area. And we sat here and we were here, to, the shop closes at eight o'clock at night. We were here till 1230 in the morning. There was eight people just smoking cigars and talking with the owner of the company and his rep and the owner of this shop and three or four other people. And it was amazing. And, uh, but uh, it was funny, it, when, when I read the production notes for, for today's show, the thing I think that, because I've been smoking cigars a long time, and it's kind of, uh, um, people know that I smoke cigars, so I have a tendency to get cigars from people and there's been a couple of experiences that I was really surprised by, and it, it, really, it was really nice that somebody would take the time to come into this establishment, and both, both the occasion I'm thinking about, um, people went out of their way 
to come in here, talk to Ron, the owner, and say, hey, I need to get a cigar for Larry. What would you recommend? Right. Those are probably two of my favorite experiences with cigars because it's just the personal interaction that somebody took to to do that, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just, that was just cool that 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 happened and and you know and i was i made it a point well, on both those occasions with those cigars that were that were provided to me to make sure that i took time to sit relax and enjoy that cigar experience i didn't grab one of those sticks and go okay i'm driving to sacramento this morning i'm gonna smoke this in the truck on the way down i made sure that i had you know a good hour that I wasn't doing anything but enjoying that cigar and it made that experience you know that much more so you know for me as I thought about this I've had many of uh, great experiences smoking cigars um, a recent one that comes to mind and we may have mentioned it on the show but I'll mention it again anyway because I think it matters we had the honor of going to one of our friends fellow um, smokers retirement celebration. He's a sergeant major, he was a sergeant major in the US Army and it was at a winery and he had set a table aside for, uh, for you know, his cigar smoking friends. You know, one of our friends, um, Barry uh, Fitzpatrick, who was in Vietnam, he was a grunt and then he um, left the Marines to go to the Army to become a chopper pilot in Nam. Um, I, and, this isn't hyperbole, he's a goddamn hero. He was wounded in Nam, and you know, he's just an incredible individual, as is Robert. Um, so um, this person, I hope he doesn't mind me saying his name, Robert Mad uh, Maddy, for, um, former Sergeant Major in the US Army. So we were at his retirement, smoking cigars, and hearing all these people speak you know, very well of him, and there were a group of guys on the hill. And he'll tell you, he got choked up because those guys in the hill started speaking of them and they said if it wasn't for you and they didn't get into details i didn't need them i got the essence he said the guy who told i'm robert he says if it wasn't for you we wouldn't be alive and that you know you hear that you're like fuck you know so that was a great experience but then there's part two I don't want to leave it on a somber note. So we all come back because Greg has a key to the shop. So we all come back and we're smoking cigars and, you know, we're just talking shit like we always do. And had this idea of getting one of our less socially adept friends to get them over to Vegas for the big smoke. And then we go to a strip club, take them to a strip club. <laughs> and we came up with this whole story about how they get enamored with one stripper and we named her Cinnamon. <laughs> and it just, it took off from there. The story just took a wild turn. It was just hilarious. And it's that kind of camaraderie and um, fun that you have with your fellow cigar smokers, which just cements the fact that this is a community and we have fun with each other. We tease each other. I mean, you listen on the show. This is nothing compared to what we do to each other at the shop. It's true. And you don't get that from Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things I appreciate being in a lounge is, and I, I believe this, the cigar lounge is the last bastion of honesty. It truly is. We can sit back 98% of the time and talk about topics that are foreboding that you would be uncomfortable with, but we can actually sit here like adults and talk about it honestly. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I appreciate about it. You know, so for me, I think that kind of sums up you know one of my fondest experiences but i don't know if it tamps it down to exactly one because i think it's one of many it is it, you can't you can't have just one favorite in something like this just like it's truly impossible to pick one cigar as your favorite you know okay. every experience is unique every experience is new and and 99 percent of them are hysterically fond and they build on each other you know it's a it's a continuing experience 
and that's I think for all of us what we enjoy about it you know we all three of us come from uh, that are sitting here talking to you right now come from you know different walks of life different yeah. parts of, uh, of the country different you know different different experiences and we're able to come together and you know enjoy those experiences amongst ourselves make fun of each other about those experiences mercilessly and, and it's just relaxing you yeah. know and, and it's just you can you can socialize you can interact you know and you can pick up your stuff and when it's time to go and you know hey i'll see you guys next time yeah for me it's a pressure release valve i mean i can be offensive I mean, I'll tell you right now, I could be cruel to these two fuckers, but I tell you right now, if I was in trouble, they'd be the first to come to help. We break each other's balls, we have a good time, but we're friends. We can do that. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing. I mean, we have friends, I mean, who, of course. Well, to a certain degree, we ain't carrying that gun safe upstairs. <laughs> no. That's all I'm saying, man. No, no, I pay people for that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh I'm God, saying, no! And we're not carrying hey, we're not carrying that spa over the back, over the backyard fence. And, 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 you know, I love you, man, but not that much. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. I won the last time I helped a friend move. He had this dresser in his bedroom, and I swear, some furniture maker found like a freaking hunk of lumber and just carved it out of that. Let's just say, no, it's a tree. Concrete a, dresser? Yeah, pretty much. And I'm on the end, so I'm on the lower part taking this downstairs. If they had let that go, I'd have been dead. And then I thought to myself, I'm in my 40s. I don't do this shit anymore. Uh -uh. It's like, hey, you want to help me move? Hey, no, I can give you a name to a couple of movers. <laughs> Go pay, go pay money, you cheap bastard, and have movers do it. Ah, no, I'm too old for that. That's for kids in their 20s. When it's like you're asking me to move something um, about as heavy as a futon. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I don't even like bringing the Christmas decorations up. That's too much moving for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Nah, I, 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 don't do it. <laughs> cha -cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching. <laughs> no! I wasn't even going. No, no, I wasn't even going there. See, Larry and I, being married, we understand each other. Yeah, give each other that look. You know. Yeah, because both our wives listen, so yeah, yeah we were stupid enough to say, hey, honey, take a listen to our show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was it's freaking all, brilliant. All over but the crying now. Oh, 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 Larry, real uh, briefly here. here we go. No, 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 no. So I was over at Robinson's the other day when we were ch checking out our new technology. As you notice, there's no mic stands. We've done gone wireless, but I um, was talking to Sue. Uh -huh. oh, shit. You're going to see the doggy playpen when we go camping on Memorial Weekend. Oh, God. But <laughs> Sue loved the idea of the stroller. Just of so course you know. she loves the idea. <laughs> you get the stroller, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it won't make it into the house. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, no. Because no. last time I checked, if Tiny Wife ain't happy, no one in that house is happy. I have no idea what, I don't know what they're talking about. I think they're pulling your leg. I don't think they got you a stroller. They're just doing it to fuck, they're, they're just fucking with us. That's all they're doing. And that stroller will be in a fucking landfill. You understand now that this is, this, you've thrown down the gauntlet. You understand that, right? <laughs> you know I work at home, right? Hey, watch, watch this. Honey, Scott and Tiny and wife need a dog stroller. Let me know what my, know. let me You're know. You're fucked. Let me know, Sherry, what my half is. We need to have it delivered by camping weekend. She'll bring it with her. She'll roll that son of a bitch right out the trailer. Here you go, Sue. Hey, what the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, I take a hammer to it, and it's outside all crushed up. It's like, oh, Gus has been to the campsite. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you try that. It's been mauled by a bear. Damned its thing. Yeah, you try that. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. We've got a plan in place. <laughs> that stroller will disappear. Yeah, you, you try that, you know, 7.30 in the morning when, she, when she's making potatoes and eggs with a beer in the other hand. You give that a shot, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you guys fucking suck. Yeah, that's what But we're okay with it. You know, we yeah. embrace the suck. Mm -hmm. We realize we suck. <laughs> and, you know, we expound on the fact that we suck. Uh, so, so how's that me... cigar ending up for you? 
No, I was just with a dog stroller. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What's to see? April. <laughs> Christmas is coming. <laughs> Eight months. In the words of Patrick Swayze, you ain't seen bad yet, but, but it's, it's coming. coming. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. I got something for your ass on Christmas. <laughs> So, Greg, how's that cigar working for you? Yeah, you keep it up. I'm going to bring Sue over to the house and let her feed the new donkey, jackass. <laughs> we could adopt a donkey for them. <laughs> Get him one of them little mini ones for their backyard. You Why? see Scotty riding it around the neighborhood. <laughs> have to stick his legs way out like this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, fuck with us. There's a plan. <laughs> Dude, don't mess with a cat with ADD. Because I will stop everything I'm doing just to fuck your world up. <laughs> because I think it's funny. You know? And uh, it will be. Because we'll film it and shit. We'll put it on the show. There'll be people in, you know, Wisconsin going, hey, look at that brother with a donkey. <laughs> you ever read The Godfather? <laughs> <laughs> Never make a threat. Oh, it's not a threat. It's a promise. <laughs> no, I'm talking me. Oh, you. Okay, all, right, all right. Just make, just, apparently, you can't be reasoned with. Oh, here we go. All right. All right, place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. We should do a square pool, uh, you know, get the, get the listeners involved. <laughs> Speaking of listeners, okay. Y'all sick of us yet? No? God bless. <laughs> now he's going to beg, folks. I'm not going to beg. I'm going to politely ask. Pander. Pander's, Pander's good. Leave a review. If you're listening and you like what you hear or don't like what you hear, leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. We want to hear from you. So, you know, if you're on Apple... Take take the time and give us you know give us a few stars give us five stars would be even better. Yep. You know I'm not I'm not begging I'm just politely requesting. Subliminally suggesting. There you go. Don't forget our new YouTube page under Loomis Cigar Cartel. Yes, absolutely. You know maybe we should have like a little audio like behind us going like and subscribe like and subscribe like and subscribe. Yeah. No. Sign. <laughs> I try. I, I, I truly do. I, I, hey, as I said this morning, you got to throw some ideas out there. Sooner mm -hmm. or later, you'll come up with a good one. True. True, true. So, how's that cigar working out for you, Greg? Dog stroller aside. <laughs> Dog stroller aside, you know, um, as I expect with Gran Habano, it is an amazing cigar. Its construction's always perfect. The flavors are a little bit more subdued. Um, but I think that's a benefit to the cigar because I'm tasting more subtle notes that disappear in the regular line. So, uh, you know, if you guys get the opportunity and can get down here to Tobacco Republic before they sell out of them, give this cigar a try. I've got the 2011. These two have got the 2010. You know, get down in here and give it a try before they sell out. Yeah, I got a box of the 2011 yesterday and I'm thinking about doing a Pierce this morning and acquiring the rest of them, because I think that's the last box. Of that one, I'd have to go look, but probably. I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I thought about doing something cruel yesterday, and just, hey, Ron, I'll take all of them. <laughs> that would be mean. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> How about Greg, you, Larry? Excuse uh, me, I'll just say this. The only reason Greg is saying that's not mean, because he knows that he house sits for me. And, and I get free reign in his humidor. Yeah, pretty much it's like, hey, whatever you want to get, and, you know, when he's not acting like a prepubescent girl going, well, I don't want to smoke all your good ones. Just get in there, fucker, and smoke a cigar. I don't care. I'm getting off cheap even if, you know, you smoke the most expensive ones. Especially I got someone I can... dog shit's a crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, I figure, you know, I'm not paying you, so it's kind of like you get free roam on my house and my humidor and my liquor cabinet, so, or excuse me, bar and wine fridge. Have at it. I'm still coming off pretty good. Yeah. I know my house is not going to burn down. No one's breaking into it. The dog's taken care of, so Tidy Wife's happy. Yep. And let's admit it, I'm happy because I kind of like them too. But mm -hmm. Liquor cabinet. That's funny. 
Yeah. Your bar area is bigger than my first apartment. <laughs> no, it's not. Really? They, see, they tried to make me sound like Thurston Howell or something. <laughs> we don't need to try. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Come in here, dear. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Sue. Continuing on, how's your cigar doing, Larry? <laughs> uh, I'm down, getting close to the end of this, and uh, um, this has been excellent all the way through. Um, great draw. Like Greg said, the construction on these is amazing. I can't ever remember having a badly constructed uh, Grand Habano. Grand Habano. It's just they hold together great. It's they burn consistent. It's got a great draw. Um, yeah, I, I'm a little, if anything, I'm a little disappointed in myself that I don't roll through that line a little more often than I do. And that's kind of, that's kind of, I don't want to say it's a negative, but that's kind of the hard thing coming into a humidor, the size that we have here at Tobacco Republic. There are so many great cigars that sometimes you kind of forget about this stuff over here because you're focused on yeah. this stuff here. So yeah, this um, Scott pointed me in this direction. I was this morning, I had something else already cut and ready to light. And he goes, you might want to try one of these. And I'm like, okay. And yeah, excellent suggestion, sir. And a fabulous cigar. Yes, most definitely. Let me say something about the Grand Habano line. And I hesitate to say this, but I got to tell you, it's a freaking steal for the price point that no, it is. I, you know, I go to Grand Habano a lot. I mean, their lunch breaks are amazing. Mm -hmm. Those little guys, I could buy a box of those. I mean, they don't break your wallet for the taste that you get, the flavors and the experience of the Grand Habano for its price point. I mean, we're talking, and this is California money, we're talking California prices at cigar taxes and all. This is eleven ninety five dollars for this 2010 um, Grand Reserva. It's an incredible smoke. Even the ones that aren't aged, you're talking anywhere from seven ninety five dollars to, I think, the highest Grand Habano is 14 14, 14 bucks, yeah. But you can go on the 795, and that's just by size. It's just an incredible, I mean, the Grand Habano line is an incredible, incredible buy. I strongly suggest if you haven't tried it, give it a go. Yep. It doesn't break your wallet. You can afford, you can actually get a box and not feel like you getting, you know. And they have a diversity in their line that wherever your palate's at, you're yeah. gonna find something, you know, another plug for going to your brick and mortar. Yes. Um, if they carry the Grand Habano line, talk to talk to the proprietor, you know, have them help you, you know, into a Grand Habano stick that will, you know, complement your palate and you will not be disappointed. Yeah, the great, the great thing about Grand Habano is if you are a newbie into the cigar journey, it's a good primer cigar. It's just something that you can ease into. The Connecticut, I would suggest if you're just first starting out, try a Grand Habano Connecticut and you can go small and it's a lot of great flavors. It's not something that's gonna overwhelm you. It's something you can start out on and build yourself up. Even if you get it in a Maduro. Yep. The, Maduro the Maduros aren't harsh, it's flavor. That's mm -hmm. what you want. You want the flavor. You don't necessarily always it just depends on your palate if you want the strength of a uh, maduro but this maduro is not just about strength it's about flavor and i think that's the big thing it just depends on your taste though some guys hey they go for the strength they love the, the strength some you know for instance our friend who smokes lfd chisels yeah and, you know you're going for i want to feel like i went like 10 rounds with drago so <laughs> i'm going to smoke this i'm i'm feeling like this today or, you know, you get a Maduro that you get, like the Camacho. It has, a, um, I think it's the blue one mm -hmm. that um, in Maduro. And it has a really smooth flavor to it. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Well, looks like the smoke is nearing the nub and the scotch glass is obviously empty. So I think it's about that time. I want to thank our audience out there. And on behalf of Larry and Greg and myself, thanks for listening. 
check us out at LumaCigarCartel.com. Look, look us up on YouTube under Luma Cigar Cartel. Like and share us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Don't be a stranger. Drop us a line, let us know you're out there, and please, please leave a review. Like it or don't like it, I'm not particular. I'm Scott Robinson, and from all of us here at Beyond the Humidor, I look forward to chatting with all of you, along with Greg and Larry, on the next episode. So until then, take care, stay healthy, and good smoke, good drink, and good life. <laughs>